Today we want to go further in our study and the roots of Christmas. And so if you have your Bible, uh, look to Luke chapter number 1 and verses uh, 39 and following. We're going to be looking at the time when Elizabeth is visited by Mary. And uh, notice it says in verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation or the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And for lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, a babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Before we go any further, let's ask the Lord's help. We're glad you're here this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the inspired Word of God. We thank you for the historical, biblical narrative of the holiday season that we celebrate as Christmas. And Lord, just for a moment, I pray you help us to lay aside the cares of this world to be able to see further what is not known or not commonly known by even your people. I pray you use the word of God to be a blessing, to encourage us, give us understanding, and we pray for anyone listening that may not know you as Savior, that this day, this season, might be the time that they come into a relationship with you through your very Son. The Lord, we'll give you praise and we'll give you thanks. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. I'm sure all of us can say uh, that we've experienced some sort of encouraging time uh, during Christmas from the time that we were a kid to the time that we were older as well as there was times I'm sure that you experienced some negative and not so much encouraging times. Christmas time is a time of reflection for many. It's a time when people are excited I would say and uh, I'm in the festive mood. I, I may not look like I'm in the festive mood but I am. And I, I want to see people encouraged. I want to be able to tell more about my Savior in personal conversations. And uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we know that the world in which we are living in, there are trials and heartache even as I speak. And God wants to use you to be a light of encouragement to those in your pathway. And when I think of uh, what's before us, interestingly enough, after Mary gets the news about her cousin Elizabeth having a baby, instead of just sitting there, instead of just, you know, I think if they had cell phones during that day, there's no doubt in my mind, they would have been on that phone, right? Because you're talking about two very important births at, the, at about uh, six months apart, John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so I could see the FaceTime in, I could see the texting going on, phone calling, et cetera, et cetera. And, and yet, uh, Mary did not have that technology, and I don't think she would use smoke signals, amen? <laughs> but uh, she makes a beeline. She doesn't stay in the comfort of her home, and she makes an, uh, a journey to Judah to see uh, Elizabeth. And um, to me, this is going to require a little bit of sacrifice, and who else is going to understand that a young maiden, lowly maiden that Mary saw herself as, uh, who's going to understand that she is pregnant through the power of the Spirit of God. And maybe she understood that Elizabeth would understand because there are two supernatural or two unusual births going on at the same time. So uh, let's look at Mary's visit to Elizabeth and uh, a couple of thoughts, and, um, and uh, it won't take long to go. First of all, we see the running visit by Mary. Notice our text, verse 30, uh, 39. It says, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with what? With haste 
into the city of Judah. Now, this is very, very interesting. And really, you could probably put most of this that I'm going to preach on into one uh, main point. But the fact that she is going to make a journey to where her cousin is is, is a challenge to me because she could have she could have waited and she could have said, well, I'm going to wait till that baby comes to pass. But instead, she decides to make a beeline towards her cousin's house. Verse 41 says, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And um, I think it's important for us to understand what's going on here. Sometimes we can read over a lot of the scripture and not even recognize what's going on here. But here is a mother and another mother to expect one six months uh, that's been pregnant. And yet we have now Mary come into Elizabeth's house. And notice the Bible says in verse 41, And when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Who's leaping? We would say, it's John the Baptist that's leaping. And you would say, well, that's just because, you know, babies make movement. And uh, there's a lot that's been said. And this is not necessarily a message on abortion, but I think it, believe it needs to be said. The babe inside Elizabeth's womb, as much as the babe inside Mary's womb, was not just a fetus. It was a person. It was a life. And uh, we know their names uh, as the Bible refers to them as John and one to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we have to take the position, I, I would say as Christians, and revisit this, that human life begins at conception and that the unborn child is a living human being. Can I get a witness? And anything that, you know, abortion constitutes the unjustified, someone say unexcused taking of unborn human life, Abortion is murder. We reject any teaching that abortions of pregnancy due to rape, incest, birth defects, gen, gen, gender selection, birth income, population control, or mental well-being of the mother are acceptable. And you say, why? Because every person born is born by the power and the ability of God. You are a gift from God, and children are still an inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of this womb is His reward. We live in a state, I don't know if you understand, that it's given to aborted babies. And I'm not going to get into the statistics. We need to pray for our leaders of our land, pray for the governor of our state. And I'm thankful that my own mom did not believe in abortion. And I'm thankful that your mom did not believe in abortion necessarily. And we don't know all the statistics. I'm not here to burden you about that truth. But you have a babe inside a womb that leaps. Why is that? Because it has life. It has a purpose. It has meaning. It's not just a blob. It's not just something that was created and, and to get away with. It is precious in the sight of Almighty God, and though we may have politicians that even, and they've said some very ungodly things, and I'm not saying all of them do, but I've heard some politicians say they are domestic sewage. Can you imagine that? Ungodly statements about the unborn that are aborted. Well, in our text, we have Mary being visited by, uh, Elizabeth being visited by Mary, and the Bible says, and the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And so we go into the response uh, of Elizabeth in our text today. We showed a little bit of the response of the babe towards Mary's voice. But notice in verse 42, And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, I think it's very interesting that when you study this passage that Mary uh, and Elizabeth meet. And, uh, and now there's responses as we just read here in the, 
text that Luke gives to us. You speak with a loud voice. Some have said this is a song, uh, and you can speak out loud. And if you are a former Roman Catholic, uh, you might say she began to holler out or saying the rosary. You say, why do you say that? Because in verse 42, it says, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. That's where they get it from, and I'm not trying to, in any shape or way, form, uh, endorse Mariology, that is the worship of Mary, uh, or that salvation comes through her, because it doesn't. It only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. It says, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, and whence is this to me, uh, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. In Luke's account, there are at least what we would call five phrases or segments of Psalms. Or, and you need to know, become familiar with this. Uh, this is one of them that we're going to read. And then we're gonna, the second one will be um, Mary's song or Magna Cat found in Luke 1 verses 46 through 45. And then the Zachariah song in Luke chapter 1 verses 67 through 79. And then the angel song, also known as glory and excess in Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And Simeon's song in Luke chapter 2 and verse 29 through 32. Now the Holy Spirit must have revealed to Elizabeth a wonderful truth because the Spirit of God is working in the hearts and minds. He connects, he gives understanding, but Mary greets Elizabeth, we would say with humility, and acknowledges something very, very important. So Elizabeth says, from whence is it that my mother of my Lord should come to me? Two things I will acknowledge right here. The first is that she doesn't say Mary is the mother of God. And a lot of our friends that attend a different um type of church, and I'm referring to the Roman Catholic Church, so would readily tell you that Mary is the mother of God. If Mary was the mother of God, what does that make Mary then? And, you know, uh, is she the creator? No, she's not. There's only one creator, God. And uh, but Elizabeth gives her the right title, the mother of my Lord. The virgin-born uh, son of God is something we still believe in. And, and so she doesn't make much of it, and, um, and she rehearses what happened uh, in her womb. That is, uh, notice in verse 44, for as soon as the voice of thy salutation, that is, Elizabeth is talking to Mary, as soon as you say hello to me, notice that sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for what? For joy. I think it's very interesting that uh, uh, we've seen this with uh, our own children, how my wife has sang songs and how the babies can uh, be impacted by uh, uh, the attitude and by the uh, emotions of a mother. But this babe inside uh, Elizabeth's womb was certainly rejoicing when she heard, when the babe heard the, the salutation of Mary. And then we find uh, in verse 45, and blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. One of the great commentators that I love to be able to reference to, uh, don't always agree, all, all, the, all the things that are written by people out there is a preacher named Albert Barnes. He mentions this, that blessed is she that believes, that is Mary who believed what the angels spoke to her, she was blessed not only in the act of believing, but because the thing promised would certainly be fulfilled. And so when you look into the word of God, what is God trying to tell us? This is something that we all need to acknowledge in this portion of scripture that we have before us as Mary visits Elizabeth. What are the takeaways? What is God trying to reveal to you and I as his people? Well, I would say one of the things that stands out is that whatever's inside those wombs is going to be great. Never underestimate a child being born of the potential, and certainly John the Baptist uh, will be called this by Jesus, 
that there's none greater that has been born of women than John. And of course, we know the spiritual attack even against Jesus. Remember, Herod wanted to kill all the firstborn. And because the wise men from the east came, according to Luke's account, they've been seeking for a he that is born king of the Jews. And, and so God, in his providential care, took care of both babies to fulfill his purpose and his plan. Now, sometimes we might think, and especially if you're a parent, it does take a lot of work, amen? Uh, and and kids need attention, and thank God for all the children that have come through the doors. And if you have kids in your house, thank God for them. And you may be thinking this as a mom or a dad. I know I thought this, that, man, uh, I can't wait till these kids are grown up. And, and then now you look hindsight, and wow, where did the time go? And they, they were some of the best years of our life. And, and uh, I thank the Lord for the memories. The memories of the just is blessed. So two babies don't underestimate the plan of God and what God is trying to do. His ways are above our ways. And so when Mary uh, visits Elizabeth and the babe blooms, thank God for that. Here's the second thought that came to my mind. And this is more of a practical note. And it's harder because a lot of people are adjusting to maybe what they need to do this holiday season. And what can I get? And what should I do uh, for my friend or my family member? Do what Mary did to Elizabeth. Go visit somebody. Go visit somebody. Uh, your time is the most valuable thing that you could ever give to somebody now you can give somebody a gift you can make baked goods and certainly you'll thank God for that but when when I think of all the things that uh, in my childhood I remember the family gatherings that uh, we used to live in a still do a place called New York Village down at Laguna and those family gatherings when the family would come to our two-room home and we would be jam-packed it would be hot there would be a Christmas tree uh, we will have exchange of gifts, but I, I thoroughly enjoy that. It, it is one of the blessed times where families uh, gathered together and made that journey. Now today, fast forward to 2023, uh, we are blessed with those uh, uh, cell phones that we can have a live, uh, I mean, we're in the Jetson era to some degree. Uh, we can look on the phone and see someone across the world right there on the palm of our hand. There's no substitute. There's no substitute like a personal visit to a loved one. Mary challenges me on this line. Uh, because, you know, time is very critical. Time is the valuable resource of life. And we only get to have it one day at a time. Uh, what, what did you do today? Is a common question that a lot of people do. How's your week going? And, and then uh, if you have elderly parents or an elder uh, loved one in your family, uh, usually uh, in our mom, in the case of our mom, and uh, we would ask something like this, so who came to see you this week? Uh, did somebody come by? And so why do we ask that? Because we know that's important for her to be encouraged by the presence of family and friends. So visit someone this holiday season, and don't stop. And you'll be surprised uh, what God can do with that visit, uh, and thinking of uh, an elder couple uh, that uh, they used to, uh, they couldn't come see us, but they, they would tell us to go see them, and so uh, we would go see them, if you heard this before, uh, James and Helen Patton, they've already uh, passed on into glory, and uh, we would go to Albuquerque to go see them, and uh, before we would leave, and uh, Grandma Helen Patton would say, don't leave. Your grandpa has something to give you. And uh, come out of the kitchen with uh, brown grocery bags. And we'd be telling him, we didn't come to your house to see you. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. And, and I just think of the joy that, that we have. And, and, and you never know what your visit, uh, your time with someone invested for, even if it's five minutes. Uh, if you can make it longer, praise the Lord. Uh, investing in someone uh, for the glory 
of God. But here's the third thing. Mary uh, visits, uh, and think about the distance. Uh, Mary hears the news in Nazareth, uh, the ghetto central of, of, of that whole area, and now she's got to go to Judah. And uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth are in the hub of, of Jerusalem, and so that's a 70-mile journey. Think about that, 70 miles. She goes out of her way to go visit a relative. And uh, wow. And then later on, uh, Mary and Joseph will go to the town of, of her, their descendants, and that would be Bethlehem. And uh, that's where the baby would eventually, babe Christ Jesus, will be born in that area. But here's the third thing that I want to emphasize here belief and action go hand in hand. Belief and action go hand in hand. The first is never underestimate the the role of a child, the babe. The second is go visit someone. But belief and action go hand in hand. Is it true we practice what we believe? Well, notice going back to what Elizabeth says to Mary. It says, and blessed is she that what? Believe it, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And, I, and I, I look at this passage, and I'm reminded that I'm sure the young virgin, Mary, was wondering, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me when I have this baby? And we know some of the accounts of what happened. We can only speculate what some people thought about her. But she believed that what the angel had told her was going to happen. And now she is seeing for sure What's happened to her her cousin Elizabeth six months in pre her pregnancy and how two women are, I would say there was embracement, I would say there was joy, there was happiness, but in our lives as individuals, what about us? Do we really practice what we believe? Does the world know us by what we do or do they only know us by what we hear or what they hear us profess. And so when I think of uh, these two, um, Mary uh, gives us an example. We talked about this on, on Wednesday night, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the, Lord, uh, of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And then Elizabeth now has a babe in her womb. And Elizabeth will bring forth that child and we will know him as the forerunner of our Savior. Now I've had to think about this for myself. Do I believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life? Or do I believe there's another way you can get to heaven? Was Jesus Christ uh, born of the virgin and who lived a sinless life and went to Calvary's cross and died on that cross? Was that in vain or was that the greatest news ever told? For God so loved the world, John says, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If I believe it's good news, and again, we practice what we believe, faith and belief go in hand with our actions, then I need to, and the application for me, and for you, I would say, is to take that good news and let others know about it. And I would say to some degree, some people are more open to hearing about Jesus during the holiday season. So Christians, you and I, believers everywhere around the world can sing songs of praise that reflect about the birth of the Savior. I had a, a Trisha and I went in Albuquerque, take care of some business on Friday night. And my daughter was... Uh, in Old Town, and uh, she wanted us to come over and join her for the Christmas lighting. Uh, the lighting was already done, but we showed up, and I was encouraged that this year, that I, I'm, I'm not sure we've ever been there for Christmas lighting. I don't remember ever being there, but um, we got there, and we saw the uh, marachas, or, or the Mexican under the, um, what do you call that? Marachis, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it was crowded, a lot of people there. 
A lot of Christmas lights all over the place. Vendors were out selling stores. It was jam-packed. And we were thankful that we got a parking spot just right on the other side of the main gazebo area, not too far from the crowd. And what was encouraging to me was two groups, two car- sets of carolers. One near the Christmas tree where they were caroling, and they had a looked like a choir director. And I thought, here's a witness on its own. Do you believe what you believe, or are you letting your light so shine? I, I thought it was such a blessing to hear uh, the songs of, of Christmas that I'm talking about the Christmas caroling. And then when we were getting ready to go, we went back to the original place uh, where we were pa- passing by, and, and, and another group was over here. And they likewise, and it looked like a church group, and they were singing the Christmas hymns of the season. And I thought, this is another way. This is truly another way to get the message that we believe in to share with the world. You are the only Bible, as we've said many times, that some people will ever believe. So in closing here, the message is not long. The Bible tells us, verse 45, that blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Now this is Elizabeth's conversation, song you might say, word of encouragement to Mary. Mary is truly going to be that blessed one in the sense that she has been chosen by God to bring forth the Messiah into this world. And likewise, Elizabeth would be blessed uh, and she would be carrying forth John uh, and God would give John the privilege to be the forerunner, the announcer, Messiah is here. Two babes, great purposes. Mary makes a visit and both are exercising the privilege of faith as well as putting into practice what they believe is true. And that is walking in fellowship through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. And we are no different in the sense that we can make choices this holiday season and for the rest of our lives do those things that are pleasing in the sight of the Lord. I read a quote by John R. Rice, a preacher of yesteryear, and he made the statement that so many people are, are not going to be able to enjoy the Christmas holiday season because they cannot look to the Father and tell the Father, the Heavenly Father, that I have received the gift that you sent forth. And that gift will be the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have never trusted in Jesus, I would plead with you today, receive him. Greatest decision I've ever made in my life. And the holiday season, for me, is special. And as I mentioned earlier, there could be some moments that we reflect on that are both encouraging and not so encouraging. But it was the holiday season. And I love to tell you the story. Servicemen uh, went in in 1979 and were bombed out after high school, two years, tried to go to college, University of Albuquerque, started partying with the wrong crowd. I was involved in a rock and roll band at that time. And I did the one thing I thought I'd never do. I signed a dotted line in the military. Joined the Navy. I had no idea that the Navy corpsmen, at that time medical corpsmen, were attached to the Marine Corps. Got sent over to Okinawa, Japan. And then the only cruise that I ever went, I thought, when I joined the Navy, I saw the commercials. It's not just a job. It's an adventure. I thought I'd be riding the waves around the world. But the only little cruise I had was from Okinawa, Japan, to South Korea. And so we went on this little cruise back and forth. But when we went to the cruise, I thought, what now? The Marines are out there. I was attached to a particular unit. And during the night hours, some Marines, some believers, some Christians were meeting nightly when they were shooting their cannons. And they would invite me. They would call me Doc. They would say, Doc, why don't you come to the Bible study? One particular man named Charlie invited me numerous times. I went. I heard. And I heard the greatest news. I heard that God loved us. 
And I heard that Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross and that he was buried and he rose on the third day. Now, mind you, it's Christmas season. Mind you, we think about Christmas as kids and the wonder of it, of it all. And it was a, it seemed like it was a God forsaken land. The ground was cold as, as ice. You could take a military shovel and stick it in the ground and it would just bounce off. That's how cold it was. But in the midst of this area, there were some men that had a relationship with the Savior. And they simply practiced what they believed. Charlie reached out. We would call that evangelism, compassion. And said, come to our Bible study. Rick Gates was not ashamed. He was the chaplain. And he declared what the scripture has to say. That didn't make me a Christian automatically, by the way. You're not responsible for saving people. You and I are only responsible for sharing the good news, the gospel. And through that sharing that gospel, I stand before you very grateful for someone that practice what they believed. And you may be that vessel this holiday season that God could use to bring hope, encouragement, and salvation in the heart of someone who needs it so desperately. Father, we thank you. We praise you. In this little court portion of scripture uh, that we see two women who've encountered the same angel, who've been given a message, and both of them responded in such a way that, Lord, we Thank you that we have the recorded history that both came into life. Both a baby named John and a baby that we know as the Savior. Lord, thank you for the gift of God. Thank you for the gift of life. And we would pray for the Holy Spirit to use us. May this be the season. Lord, that we might make contact. That we might make communication. Might make that visit to someone that desperately needs it. And Lord, that you will help us not to forsake you, not to abandon what we believe. Help us to be rooted and grounded in the truth of the word of God. And Lord, that we might grow as you want us to grow and that we might be used by you as you want us to be used. And we'll give you thanks and we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.